Hi, I'm Jessica Rector, founder and host of This Man Thing, where we help men go bolder, think bigger, and be better to gain more freedom, confidence, and success. You can find us at thismanthing.com, and you can also join our free Facebook group at thismanthing.com forward slash groups, where men are having real conversations and building much needed community support and camaraderie with other men. This man thing is all about men, for men, about men, and connecting men from around the world. Rory Manatunga is a health, fitness, and nutrition expert of the slow health movement. He is leading the movement to encourage people to slow down and live intentionally to achieve their vision and health. Please help me give a warm welcome to Rory. Hi, welcome, welcome, Rory. Hi, Jessica. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. So tell us a little bit about you and about your background so we can get to know you a little bit more. Sure. So I, um, my stick or what I want to really breach today is the notion of body positivity in men yeah. because it's something that I struggled with until literally probably less than a year ago. Mm. Um, where I really, I grew up a chubby, overweight, shy kid. And so as a consequence, I was always hating my body. I was always self-conscious. I was always just, I didn't feel at home in my own skin sort of mm. thing. And so throughout the years, being sports mad Australian that I am, I loved sports, got stuck into it, but there was always that, little niggling thing that you're not good enough because you look like this because of you way your body is uh, portrayed to yourself mm. and I think developing on that I went down the, the road of health and fitness and got me to a point where I could control I knew all how to train essentially but I still had that niggling voice I got down to my goal weight still had that niggling voice and over the years, that caused me to fluctuate up and down um, with my weight. And I was never, uh, never happy, I suppose, boiling it down. And then um, my lovely fiance introduced me to the notion of body positivity, particularly from a female perspective. But I took it on board and really thought, why isn't this uh, an issue for men as well? Um, in, obviously, in a different sort of field, it's not necessarily about being skinny. But... I started to investigate that body positivity and saw how it could work for me. And then I started to try and figure out what strategies, what actionable steps can I take to find happiness in my body now, accept my body now, and then strive for the future with that happiness as an ever, ever going constant. So I think, so, yeah, that's, that's what So what is called. body positivity? So essentially it's uh, accepting your body, whatever it looks like feels like is like now mm. and forever as opposed to only accepting your body when you're x on the scale when you're 10 percent body fat muscular lean any of those um terms out there mm -hmm. um yeah so it's about embracing that happiness now and forever as opposed to down the track so how are you able to do that let's say you're a man and you could stand to lose 50, 70, 100 pounds. How do you accept your body at 100 pounds overweight and love yourself um, at that weight when you're focused mm. on needing to lose 100 pounds or 50 pounds? Sure. So it's, it's all about focusing on evidence gathering, I think, and it's creating a habit, a really positive habit about happiness in yourself. So you, I always start with something small, it may be even if you're really, like I was, really stuck in that negative mindset around your body, mm. that's, I would start with say my character, like I've got, I'm a funny man, I'm successful, yada, yada, yada. And just reinforcing that over time, developing, strengthening that habit, and then I'd start to tackle the more physical attributes. So like, oh, my shoulders are looking good, legs are looking good, little things like that, just picking apart, um, yeah, any, anything, any positive evidence I can gather. And here's what's interesting. It's so much easier to pick out the 10 things we hate about ourselves than to yeah. pick out the 10 things we love about ourselves. And especially when it comes to your body, something that when you look in the mirror, it is 
literally staring back at you in your face, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's not a personality trait that you don't physically um, have to see. So how do you suggest that men start to do that? What if they're looking at themselves and they really say, you know what, I can't pick out anything that I like, love, mm -hmm. Um, even accept about my body. I don't like my shoulders. They're, you know, they slouch too much. I don't like my stomach. It's too big. Like, where do we start with that? So I think um, it's, it helps to clarify, I suppose, what you're doing in that moment. It's, it comes down to a concept of pain versus pleasure. Mm -hmm. So are you running away from pain or are you running towards pleasure? Mm -hmm. And so often if you're in that sort of state, um, with the, all you can see is that pain. You've got that stabbing pain. Your belly's big. Um, you may have stretch marks like me from when I was overweight. Um, that's all you're focusing on. So you start running. You start running away from the pain. But say you lose some weight, you start getting a bit of a tan, eating better, those sorts of positive things. If you're running away from pain, if that's your primary driver, the further you get away from pain, the less the pain's going to be. So you have a chance of just meandering, go, getting lost, feeling, yeah, life's good. But because you're so focused on the pain, you haven't developed the habits that, that uh, keep you away from pain per se. So quite often you do a, almost a 180 and start coming back towards the pain because that was your lifestyle before and that's the only thing you see. So you get back to the exact same point you started with and like for weight loss especially quite often it's actually worse than when you started your push for weight loss or uh, muscle gain etc you get back to below zero below the uh, baseline but flip that on its head however to make it a bit more actionable we want to run towards pleasure so that means defining a goal something that will make you happy something that will really light you up and light that fire underneath you so that you're working towards there because that process of working towards the pleasure naturally you're going to have to come up against lifestyle changes mm -hmm. putting those habits into place and they provide that sort of break wall if you like that um that prevents you from going back towards the pain because you're focused solely on that pleasure you're doing everything productively everything solution focused to get to pleasure instead of running away from that pain. How do men start wrapping their brains around though, um, accepting their body? Because I think it also mm. has to do with body image in some way, right? Yeah, it's, it's integral. It's, it, body positivity is just being positive, positive about your uh, body image. So I think, yeah, like I, like I said before, it's, it's, it's quite simple as, I met my lovely fiance got me in front of a mirror and forced me to look at myself and say things like, I love my body, etc. I don't encourage that for everyone. That was quite intense. And, um, I'm not afraid to admit that it got a few tears out of me. Okay. So tell me what that looks like, because I want men to be able to do that. Mm. Um, especially if they're not loving their body, right? If they're, yeah. Because if they're not loving their body, they're not accepting their body, meaning they're not accepting and embracing and loving themselves. Exactly. So sometimes the best thing we can do for ourselves are those intense things yeah. that get us out of our comfort zone, the things that, you th that people say to you and you're like, eh, that doesn't sound like that's <laughs> very appealing. That sounds yeah. like that's going to hurt or that's going to be painful or that's going to be intense. That's nice. exactly what you need to be doing are the things that stretch you, that put you outside of your comfort zone. So tell me exactly step-by-step step, what your lovely fiance did for you. Beautiful. That brought tears to your eyes because I want men to be doing that. <laughs> because if awesome. it works for you, it's yeah. going to work for others. So exactly. tell us step-by-step what that looked like. So I can't recall exactly how it came about, but we were talking something along those lines or something similar that led to the realisation or the the admittance that, yeah, I just didn't like where I was at. I didn't like my body. I didn't love that physical representation of me. And like you said, it's really quite hard to accept yourself when that physical part of us, especially as men, because it's such ingrained, ingrooted with our being when that's detached from us. So I got to that point. Um, Maddie, bless her, she pulled me up, got into the uh, bathroom, made me look myself in the eye 
which I don't know if, if you've done that before, Jessica, but it's surprisingly con uh, confronting to look anyone in the eye, let alone yourself in the mirror. Yes, and it's, and it's almost uncomfortable, right? It's yeah. like, I mean, why can you not, like, we can look at ourselves in the mirror if, like, there's something on our face and we need to get it off, but if we have to just stand still, it's the art of standing still, get, looking at our eyes, connecting with our eyes, in the mirror, it's intimidating for some reason. It's almost like, okay, what am I going to see that I've been trying so hard not to see? That's yeah. the scary part, right? Exactly, it sort of brings down the, the facade that you can put out easily to everyone else, but when you're looking yourself in the eye, it's just you and your mind's eye, literally. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. Okay, um, so then what? She made you look at yourself in the eyes. Yeah. That's a little scary, okay. A little scary. And then I literally had to repeat, re repeat, I love my body to myself over and over. And um, she coached me through it and just each time to say a bit more conviction with it, um, just a little bit more forceful, a little bit more belief behind it. And bless her again, it, it, it did work for me. It was that, that spark that sort of reversed the 25 years of, hating on my body. So how did you feel? Not only looking at yourself in the eyes, how did you feel then? But how did you feel when she was coaching you? And then how did you feel at the end? So beginning, uh, middle and end, how did you feel? So beginning, it was very dismissive. It was very um, like, oh, this is just woo-woo woo -woo stuff. That's not, this doesn't vibe with me. Um, ultimately, I think it's just all excuses really. Um, that it's just trying to get out of that uncomfortable situation. Um, so that was me at the start, dismissive. I didn't want to do it. I didn't see the point of doing it. I didn't think it would come with any rewards. Mm. And then I think during, it was still just similar to that. Um, that's when the emotion started to bubble up, like, holy shit, I've been holding on to this for, mm. for those 25 years. Um, and it started to cut through to the, the real me, I suppose, which brought the emotion up, brought the tears to my eyes. Um, so I think overall uncomfortable and I think it's, it's good to have a partner or um, even a mate. Like I'm not sure how the ramifications would be if you have like your friend there to help push you through this. Mm -hmm. um, but it, that did really help me just keep on track because if I was there myself, I would have, this is too hard, jump, jumped away from it. And you wouldn't have done it, right? You'd have been like, exactly. oh, this is too woo-woo, whatever. That, yeah. sounds, that sounds like something girls can Definitely. do. Or, you know, I'm not like that. I'm a strong man. Like, I'm, I'm secure, exactly. okay? I, that's not for me. That will never work on me. That yeah. won't work on me. Like, that's not going to resonate, right? So at the end, though, when the tears came, what were the tears representing? What, 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 did, those, what did those mean? Um, I think... Reflecting on it now, it's probably like just the immense power of the breakthrough I had then. Mm. Just that like, oh, it's, it's actually okay to accept my body. It's okay to be me. Mm -hmm. It's that, like you said, like marrying the physical and the, the, my character together. Um, it just yeah, brought up a flood of good emotions ultimately, but just, yeah, a lot of emotions to deal with, which I know as, as guys, it's, it's a struggle at the best of times, but um, yeah, I think it was breakthrough, positive, yeah, positive energy just released, being released. But it has to be some some type of freeing or liberating to be mm. able to um, wipe away all those limiting beliefs that you had about yourself and, and yeah. be able to see yourself in a different way because something had to switch in your brain because you started seeing yourself in a different way. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I think like that breakthrough emotion, that... It's what I think it was comes down to looking at yourself in the eye and being able to say that with conviction. Mm. Um, and that's really sort of broke down those beliefs. Um, those, yeah, that, that in sort of intense uh, sort of tension that I held in my body for so long and held in my mind. Um, I think it was, yeah, it was incredibly liberating and that's why the breakthrough tears came and then the after it came where it was just glowing happiness, mm. um, like strength and power, all that masculine energy just was, is almost like it, it unleashed my masculine energy really.
Like, yeah, and it almost gave you permission because it sounds like you were defining yourself by your weight, right? What mm. you look like on the outside and that became your story. So it almost yeah. was liberating you to create a different story for yourself, to give yourself permission to create a different lifestyle for yourself, mm -hmm. to give yourself permission to fully embrace yourself as imperfect, as flawed, yeah. as um, as maybe who you didn't think that you would be, but mm. as who you really are and not as um, in this body that quote unquote isn't the perfect body, but just to embrace yourself as is. And so oftentimes we're not able to do that, right? We, yeah. we want, we compare ourselves to other people or, you know, we're not living up to some expectation we had from ourselves for ourselves or we're, we're not as successful as we want, or we don't have the body that we had five years ago, 10 years ago, or, you know, that we had envisioned for ourselves. And, exactly. and, and that's where comparison comes in. So how mm. did comparing yourself, because I know there had to be at some point with, um, with uh, fluctuations in weight that you had to have compared yourself to other guys, to other people. Mm. At what point did you go from comparing yourself to that to, um, not at what point, but how did you yeah. transfer comparing yourself to others to um, eliminating comparison? Yeah, of course. So my steps, and it was quite difficult for me because at the time I was working in a gym as a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. So um, working there the whole time, um, I'm not a traditional personal trainer and then I'm not uh, like 250 pounds of muscle. Um, I lost... 40 kilos over three years ago, kept it off, but I'm still lean and wow. um, I still, um, like I said before, covered in stretch marks from that experience. But um, for me, the first one was, the first step was um, unfollowing all the bodybuilders. Wait, 40 kilos, what is that in pounds? Oh, sorry. Is that like 88? Is 80, it, yeah, what? it's about 80, I think between 85 and 90 pounds. Okay, I was, I thought it was like 2.2 for, and I'm like sitting there going, is that 88? <laughs> I just got to ask, oh my gosh, like, that's amazing. Yeah. That's why I had to trans, translate it in my head. I'm like, oh my gosh, we need, we need to acknowledge that. Yes, that's yeah. amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so that's that, it. yeah, and that was, it's the most empowering time of my life, losing that, losing that weight. Um, and yet, like I said, even after I lost that weight, I was fluctuating for years because I had that niggling voice in my head. But over the last year, no fluctuations at all. So what's that, what was that voice saying to keep so, fluctuating? Yeah, so it was just like, oh, you're not good enough. Um, I was really into following a lot of bodybuilders and such as both from a personal trainer perspective, like the training, how, um, what's the training methods and such, but also just their physique and looking at all of that. And I was comparing the shit out of those other guys to myself where I am now. And, um, <coughs> pardon me. It just, yeah, it was just, that's where I wanted to be. That's where I was earning to be. But my mom was saying, Oh, you're not good enough to be there. You're not there now. Why, why, why even continue? That's, that's sort of just putting myself down, mm -hmm. despite the fact that I've always had the belief that deep down, regardless of what weight I was, that I was an athlete, I was strong, powerful. I had that inner drive, but I, my physical body didn't reflect that. And I suppose that's why it was such a hard uh, bridge to make um, across um, that during that time for me, especially because I always believed that deep down I was that, but my outside wasn't reflecting that and that's why I was um, the way I was. So how did you move past those limiting beliefs? Um, I moved past those. The first step I took was um, getting off Instagram, unfollowing all the bodybuilders, all of, mm. all of the comparison that I could. I started to limit that comparison. Oh, God. And that was probably the biggest, biggest shift I made because um, – all those inspiration videos, transformation videos of the bodybuilders, uh, what helped me lose the weight initially. But I realized I got to a point where I was compar comparing myself to them and it just wasn't being helpful. Mm. So I 
took them off my Instagram, took them off Facebook. Um, I started to focus just on the bare essentials like friends and family and um, yeah, non, non-triggering things, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of everyday life, I, I think I got really into my own training and started to focus in with on what I could control. I think that's the overall overarching yes. theme that, um, yeah, that really started to shift um, the comparison from them to me, like comparing myself to who I was yesterday. Okay, so how, what do you suggest to the guys out there who are comparing themselves? And maybe it's not bodybuilders, but maybe it's mm. you know, everyday guys that they see in gyms that they're comparing themselves yeah. to or guys that they see at work. For sure. And I think one of the things that helped me was that I started to move towards a bodyweight training um, philosophy. And so I was training by myself down at the beach at St. Kilda where I was living at the time. Uh, and also, I'm an early bird, so I was at four o'clock in the morning, wow. um, smashing it out just by myself. So I think that was that's a little extreme for a lot of us. Like a lot of us need the gym or need something similar to motivate us. Um, but I think in general terms, it's focus on what you can control. Think about okay, what training am I going to stick to? What can I eat? What um, situations are going to minimize that comparison occurring is it something as simple as um say showering at home getting in and out of the gym as quickly as possible um putting even putting music in when you're at the gym when you're training just to get into your zone get into that meditative state that a lot of us get into when we train Mm -hmm. um and just yeah just can trying to think about your life objectively and think okay i can i notice i'm feeling that sort of anxiety around comparison here, here, and here. What can I do to, what strategies can I put in place to minimize that? And I also think that when people are overweight, it's not, as I often say, it's not about the weight, right? It's about the reason. It's not about the behavior, which the behavior is like overeating, right? It's not about overeating. It's not about drinking too much. It's not about the drugs. It's not about the behavior. It's about, or I'm sorry, it's not about the symptom. Those are the symptoms. Mm. It's about the behavior. So it's about why are you doing that, right? So why are you drinking too much or doing drugs or gambling or Mm. uh, why are you eating too much? What's at the core of that issue? Because if you don't resolve that issue, it will continually come back up. So maybe um, you get healthy on your weight, but it will come back up, meaning you'll go and have too much to drink. You'll go and try drugs and all of these different ways it manifests. So they've also got to figure out what's at the core of the behavior because really the, or what's at the core of the symptom, because really eating too much and being overweight is just the symptom. It's not the problem. And so really addressing the issue of what the problem is. And like when you said, when you, um, when your fiance had you stand in front of that mirror and the tears fell that you were coming to the realization, like you were addressing like the pain and the hurt and you were able to release it of all the stuff that been building up for decades. So we've also have to give our men permission to acknowledge that and to feel process and express those emotions in a healthy way and not using food to do that. Otherwise your weight will continue to fluctuate, right? You'll continue to compare yourself or you'll get healthy in your body and then you'll go out and use some other mechanism and you'll start drinking. And then guess what? The weight's going to come back on or you're going to start doing drugs like other, other ways. So, I think that's a key component to what you're talking about and yeah. to accept and into men accepting themselves and loving themselves in their own body, in their own skin is also dealing with the issues that have led them here to begin with. What are your thoughts about that? I highly, highly agree with those. And the, the fact is your body has been taking, if you are overweight or if you are uh, unfit etc your body has been taking on that stress Mm -hmm. when your mind couldn't it's been the the punching bag to keep you alive to keep you surviving and that's why whatever weight you are you should be thankful as thankful as anything because your body has kept you afloat it might have been a terrible time it might have been um a, a struggle 
but you're still alive. And when you're alive, you can thrive. Yes. That happiness, capture that positivity. So that's, that's another thing that really flicked a switch in my head um, about getting down to those symptoms and why regardless of where you are now, it's because your body has taken the strain that your mind perhaps couldn't at that time. That's such a great point. Yeah. That's such a, oh, that's such a great point. And yeah. all the stress and the pressure. Yes, yeah. yes. That's such a great point, which also is um, uh, one of the reasons why there are so many heart attacks in men is because yeah. they're, they're not releasing that stress and that pressure except for through food, right? Exactly, uh, exactly it. And when I went through my struggle and put on, put on the weight, I put on those 80, 90 pounds in a little under six months wow. just because I was burnt out, so I was depressed. Um, and so as a consequence of putting weight on so fast, I'm, my stomach is covered in stretch marks. I've got stretch marks around my pecs. But very quickly, and I don't think I've ever had a bad thought about them because to me they're my Rambo scars. Yeah. I went to war. I fought through it, my body took on what my mind couldn't at that time. And so I'm proud mm. to have them. They're, they're a part of me and they're part that I'm better than the struggle, I'm bigger than the struggle. And that now my headspace has cleared up, this, the ultimate symptom or the ultimate cause, I suppose, yeah. of the symptoms, I can start treating my body the way it deserves and give, re, uh, repay the favour, essentially. Yeah, that's so powerful that your body's taking on the things that your mind can't take. Mm. And so thankfully, your body's taking on those things, right? Because exactly. the other result would be you wouldn't be here. So thankfully, but then you've also have to come to a realization that mm. your bot you need to respect your body, right? And your body deserves better than that. And so does your mind. And I and starting with your mind, once you get your mind straight, I think that was very, very poignant what you said. Once you get your mind mm -hmm. straight, then you can start also working on your body. Those two go hand in hand because you can work on your body, work on your body, but if your mind is still not straight, it's going to come yeah. out, like I said, in, in other ways. It may not even come back to your body. You may never gain the weight back, right? Um, exactly. But you can look at, uh, so like in, in examples like Jared Fogle, the uh, old spokesperson for Subway, like mm -hmm. he lost all this weight um, on Subway, but he never got things in sync because then he started doing pornography and, yeah. um, uh, and, uh, and he became a pedophile with children and whatnot. Um, and, and is now in jail because he never addressed the real issues at play. So it doesn't mean that you're, I mean, it doesn't mean it's going to come back directly affecting your body. It can manifest mm. its way and other, but I think in order to exactly. get your body right, you also have to get your mind right and vice versa. Yeah, they're that's, very... that's key. That is mm. key. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's so interrelated, but ultimately your mind is always going to be a hell of a lot more powerful than your body. So... Yeah. While your body, your mind has almost unlimited power and it can take, it can sometimes not deal with that because it's got too much, it's going all mm -hmm. over the shot. Mm -hmm. It's the anxiety, depression, burnout, that sort of stuff. So your body takes that on, but your body only has such a limit. And then, mm. then you start developing health symptoms and then that feeds back into your mind, dragging your mind down further. So it's about, yeah, it's treating that overall men mental headspace of where you're at digging down a little bit deeper um, with friends, family, coaches, etc., finding that root cause of everything because it's only one or two things yeah. um, often formed in those formative seven years, zero to seven year mark um, of our lives. That Once you deal with that, those issues, everything else will start to click back into place and you'll, you'll start to feel like mm, my body is struggling here. It's time to mm. yeah, repay the favour and, start to nourish, move, strengthen, do all those wonderful things that start you to really embrace your masculinity wow. again, your power, confidence, all those wonderful aspects of our lives, I suppose. Yeah, but I even love how you said, like, your stretch marks or, like, battle scars, like, Rambo. I mean, that's such a great perspective to have. Mm -hmm. that The journey that you've been on, and you can look back and say, hey, this is a journey I've been on and I've came, come out the other side. That's powerful. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, it's always been, like I said, even 
remar- even when I was still overweight and struggling with them and they were raw and red, um, I still didn't have too much negativity around them because uh, my body's doing a, doing its job. It's keeping me alive. Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah and now it's just a reminder, constant reminder that I'm stronger, I'm better than the struggle yeah. was. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. So tell us one thing that one great takeaway you want people to listening to this that they can implement or take action on um, to create body positivity in their lives. For sure. So I think it has to be the mirror activity. It has to be getting in front of a mirror. And I challenge you to do this today. Get in front of a mirror, a couple of inches away from your face, look yourself directly in the eye and either Start off with one thing you love about yourself right now or if you want to go the hardcore route, start saying you love everything about your body now. I love that. I love that. So how can we connect with you and how can we find you? Sure. So I'm, uh, my website is theslowhealthmovement.com. Uh, the best place to get amongst our community of like-minded slow folks is what we call our community is slowcommunity.com that'll take you to the facebook group so jump in there contribute we've got heaps of threads on all of our aspects of slow health and living slow intentionally one of which of course is body positivity and body uh positive body image so yeah get amongst it slowcommunity.com and um yeah we'll see you there awesome thanks so much for joining us today rory appreciate it um, I Again, I'm just correcting your host and founder of this man thing where he helped men go bolder, think bigger, and be better to gain more freedom, confidence, and success. Find us at thismanthing.com. You can also join our free Facebook group at thismanthing.com forward slash groups where men are having real conversations and building much needed community support and camaraderie with other men. They're talking about real issues affecting men. And think of it like this for the guys out there who want to be around other like-minded guys who want to know that they can be themselves and still feel loved and accepted and appreciated and understood at the end of the day, join the Facebook group and you will get more of that. And we hope to see you in that Facebook group. And until next time, have an amazing day. And you can connect with me at Jessica at thismanthing.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.